talked about Bill Burns, Secretary Blinken, Jake Sullivan, President Biden. What role did Vice President Harris play in all this? Well, it's a great question, Steph, because one of the things that is notable here is how the vice president is being is very elevated in this and, and is being put out publicly. Um, and it's something that we've seen her do just recently with the visit of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And now what we're seeing is another moment where, according to officials, she played a role in, in this prisoner swap. And the role that, that we're told that she played was during the Munich Security Conference, which Ambassador McFall just mentioned, or in February, she had a meeting with Chancellor Scholz where she raised the issue of Germany that it was very important for Germany to be willing to release this assass, Russian assassin that Vladimir Putin wanted. And she also then separately held a meeting with the Prime Minister of Slovenia, where they discussed that the role that Slovenia would play in a prisoner swap like this. And so what officials are saying is that in that meeting, particularly with Chancellor Scholz, that she really moved the ball forward in terms of getting this on track. And now what you're seeing is one officials putting that out there at a time when she's obviously in the spotlight and president biden has passed the torch to her but also she's also going to appear at joint base andrews any moment now when these americans arrive and will be part of this very significant moment for this administration at a very critical time for her politically and it's again this the second time we've seen something like this with her stepping out in a way that perhaps she hadn't been prior to her being handed the torch and, and becoming the effective Democratic nominee. What you're looking at on your screen right next to Carol is President Biden's motorcade. It has arrived, and we are now just about 10 minutes away uh, from the hopeful arrival of these Americans. It is 1131 right now. We're expecting their plane to land at 1140 p.m. Eastern Time at Joint Base Andrews as we all eagerly await. Peter, Evan Gershkovich's colleagues have said his detention completely changed the dynamics of reporting inside Russia. You've done that job. So watching, experiencing uh, what has happened to him over the last year has to be deeply personal for you. What do you think about all of this? Yeah, absolutely. When we were there, my wife Susan Glasser and I were reporting from Russia. It was during Putin's first term. And there's still the assumption that American journalists had a degree of, you know, protection or immunity that they wouldn't touch an American journalist. It wasn't always the case. Paul Plemnikov, the Russian American journalist, was killed during our time there. But for the most part, you know, those of us operating in Russia at that time felt that we could do so, uh, maybe harass, maybe monitor, you know, that sort of thing. But we never feared the kind of thing that Evan had to go through. And what's happened now with Evan, I think, uh, has succeeded in doing something that didn't even happen in the Soviet era in which basically all Western reporters have either fled Russia or only make discreet trips in there as, uh, as best they can in a, in a way that they can do so safely because uh, they are afraid of the same thing happening. It was so random. It was so, uh, you know, um, uh, unexpected that nobody can trust that they can do their job as a reporter in Russia without some degree of risk at the hands of the government. And that means that we don't have Western eyes all the time now inside Russia the way we did, the way we have for generations. That's a big, big change. A lot of my colleagues who report on Russia today do so from Berlin or the Baltics or some other places where they're doing their best to get the information from Russia through contacts that they know there, but not, uh, you know, in person. And that changes our understanding. We, we, we lost an ability, at least one small lens, into that now increasingly closed society.